It's Garlic Fries and Baseball, guys, with Joe Shasky, Mark Willard. We come at you twice a week, and we hope that you will rate, review, and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. All right, Brandon, not the only individual we wanted to talk about. We're coming off of what's being called the Evan Longoria game. Uh, Unbelievable. Unbelievable defense at third, a grand slam, and then a game ender. Almost felt bad for Lamont Wade. He he had a seed of a throw, and everyone's talking about Longoria tagging someone. Uh, But – it was dramatic. It was a great swipe tag, a great catch. And then the swirl and point over to the dugout uh, to say, review that thing. And by the way, quick aside, I'm never going to understand baseball replay. I think I bat about 30% with regard to whether I'm right or not in terms of I'm looking at replays. I'm going, well, I can sort of see what he's saying, but they're not overturning that. Yeah. And by the time it comes out of my mouth, they're like, the call has been overturned. And the Giants win the game. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I don't know what these camera angles are that they've got in New York. But anyway, great Longoria game. And it has us thinking about his Giants life and career as well, which is fascinating because Flem called him a borderline Hall of Famer. And he has been a great player in baseball. But Giants fans never really got that version of Evan Longoria. No, I mean, he spent 10 years in Tampa Bay, hit over 250 home runs. I mean, just pause for a second. Yep. 10 years, 250 home runs. That's a lot. I mean, that that is, you're talking about Brandon Belt and what he did in his career. This guy's got 70, 80 more home runs in, all, in, in a smaller amount of time. Um, and so, yeah, he was a great player. Gold Glover multiple times. The greatest Tampa Bay Ray. Say it out loud. It's kind of a crazy statement because they're a newer organization. But that's what he was. A 270 hitter. I mean, this is guy who was a prominent three, four, five hitter in the American League East for a decade. The Giants make a trade for him. It was a bold trade at the time, and it just feels like when he's played, he's been really good. Yes, he's had streaks where he hasn't been hot, but he's been really good. He's just been hurt so much. It stinks. Like, it legitimately stinks. But this is what happens when you buy years 30 through 35 on a player. And I think we just have to caution ourselves as Giants fans. I know what Bonds did. I know what the steroid era did during that during that time. Guys don't get better once they flip to 31, 32, 33 years old. And I'm just, it's, it's a great recalibration as we're going gaga over Aaron Judge, which we all want, right? Like, but what are the middle to the back end of that contract going to look like? I'm yeah. not that I wouldn't want that guy. I'm just saying there's a reality to this that older guys get hurt more often. It's a great, great point. And I think a conversation that is happening in the Giants front office and others as well. Evan Longoria has had his moments as a Giant. And in fact, I wonder if people would realize that like his career OPS, his career OPS, yeah. which is north of 800. Phenomenal. He has had above average seasons as far as OPS, both this year and last year. I know the last two years of his career. So when he is in there, uh, he is a stabilizer. He is productive. Um, he's a very, very good player. Uh, even though I think uh, maybe we're at 328 now for career home runs, only 67 of them have come in a five year period with the San Francisco Giants, 120 home run campaign um for uh for longo um but all of that said longoria is also item a in why the previous regime was fired Mm. i I don't know if everybody realizes that he is item a when they sat down and relieved bobby evans of his duties like the number one thing was that longo contract and it wasn't that you made a horrible trade and gave something up that became great you didn't no. The biggest name that you were giving up was Christian Arroyo. He's turned into nothing. Nothing. So it's not even that they gave something up. They take on a huge contract. They do not get return on that investment in terms of numbers. And that is considered something that is hung on the backs of an organization for five years. So when you're looking at a front office and saying, give us a star, give us a star, you've got money to spend. I'll agree you need to spend. I've already been on record saying that, but you also have to be very careful because the way they look at this is when you make mistakes in that arena, that's how you get fired in baseball. It's what happened to John Daniels last week with the Mm. Texas Rangers. You have to be very, very careful because what fans ask for, they get, and then they rip you for giving them exactly what they want. 
That's the normal cycle when it comes to big contracts in baseball. And I think the majority of people applauded the Longoria acquisition. I was one of the few. I remember I was on air. Me and Bonte argued. He loved the selection. Oh, give me Longo. And I was just leery. He had been hurt the year prior. You could see the numbers were starting to dip. And, and it's similar to Chris Bryant. All the telltale signs were there for you to be like, I don't know about this, you know, and the Giants swung big. And it's not just that they acquired someone who got hurt because, again, when he played, he's been good defensively. Look, I think Pablo was an underrated third baseman. Defensively, Longo's better. Longo yep. is a very, very good defensive third baseman. And when he's not been there, you really notice. It. But the area that really has limited them is the wiggle room financially in free agency because they've locked in certain things and it's really limited what they can do. And so you have this frozen spending spree because you've locked yourself into a twenty five million dollar a year player. Now, at the time when we got oh, 25 million five years from now, guys, it's not going to mean anything. I mean, we're still talking about how anchorish this contract is. And so, again, I'm not saying that you can't be gun shy. I understand. I'm saying you just have to be discerning. Because these are the kinds of contracts that they have to avoid right now when they have no money on the books. Well, I will hold the uh, you know to to a degree the Giants fan feet to the fire uh, after whatever happens this offseason happens. If the Giants go spend, if they go star hunting, if they go on a shopping spree, then I'm sorry, the majority of fans out there, you don't get to rip them in eight years. If, if, if the back end of these contracts looks bad. So there's that. I don't know if it'll matter. Will the front office still be intact in eight years? Will anybody remember the receipts? I, I, I have no idea. Here's the flip side to all of it, though. And then I want to ask you a question yeah. about Longo because, yeah, the contract was bad, but it hasn't been preventative anymore because no. of all the other things that have come off of the books. They basically cleared the books across the board. Buster Posey came off. Brandon Belt finished, recalibrated as a short-term deal. Brandon Crawford expired, recalibrated as a moderately short-term deal. Two years. Rodon is in. He's going to opt out. Like the Giants payroll as it stands right now, if they lose Rodon and they don't pick up Longo's option, is only going to be $65 million next year. That's the Pirates. So they're going to have a truckload of money mm -hmm. to spend. And by the way, that's true even if they do pick up Longo's option. So, would you? I probably would, quite honestly. Just because really? you don't have any you don't have anything in in the in the minor leagues right now. If I had some play, players that could play third base, look <laughs> We've seen, what's the guy, VR and all these. None of those guys are everyday players. And I don't even know if Longo is at this point, but I know this. He's a major leaguer. Even in his diminished, injured state, he's a major league player. He's a plus defender, and I think he's streaky, but I think he's a plus um, ball player. I really do. I actually probably would, especially if I gauged the market mark and I knew – I probably wasn't going to be able to get one of these other shortstops and Crawford's going to have to play shortstop again next year. As much as it would pain me, I, I would understand it. I really would. I know that sounds crazy. Well, I mean, the number is not necessarily that crazy. When you look at what the Giants would have to pay for Evan Longoria next year, I mean, I don't know if people realize this, but some of the money throughout – has been picked up by the Rays. Mm -hmm. um, a, a, a higher number of it would be picked up by the Rays uh, if they were to sign on to his deal next year. Fourteen and a half million would be the responsibility of the Giants. Not crazy. No, not crazy, especially because now the left side of your infield kind of has one year placeholders, which gives Luciano one more year. Uh, I know that would make people roll their eyes with the idea of Crawford and Longo over there for yet another year. I, I'll just say this. I'm open to it. I, I, I don't, I wouldn't say yes yet, <laughs> but I'm open to it depending on what you're doing with the rest of your yes. diamond. Yes. Right. Because what positions right now do we know for next year? You know, catcher. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think we mostly know shortstop. Yeah. Right and second base maybe i don't even know okay, yeah you want to give tyro i, I don't the, even the know though. share at second base and technically listella is under contract yeah so let's say i'll take second base off the play except for you know trey turner's out there yeah you yeah, yeah. make a move but 
So at most, catcher, short, yeah. second. That's it. I know. That's and, it. And there's so, not a lot of third basemen. Yeah, de- r- good point. So uh, depending on what you do to fill out the rest of those positions, it's not the worst thing that they could do yeah. at third base. You know, as I like, I'm kind of sitting here and I'm, I'm reminiscing about the Longoria years with the Giants. He does have a classic Sabian. God, I wish I could have got you two or three years earlier. Like, I really do. I think yep. had they acquired him two or three years earlier, uh, it would have been just Posey's middle of his career, I think, would have been a little different. I think Longo's tenure with the Giants is a little different. Like, we did this with Steve Finley and Marquise Chris, and there's so many older guys that Sabian would bring in toward the end. But this is one of those ones just a couple years earlier. I feel like the whole thing plays out different. It's just a wild thought, though, because the whole idea is you bring in Farhan to 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 get financial flexibility and move <laughs> through these contracts and reboot the farm system and, and be ready right. when these contracts are done. And here they are, and the contract is done, and you're going to sign on for another – like I you're going to pick up an option. I know. I, if you had asked Farhan oh, three man. years ago about Longo, he would have told you, right now I will Sharpie <laughs> that we're not picking up that option when it's all said and done. But – now here we are now, and, uh, you know, you probably would have said the same thing about Crawford and Belt at the time, and, uh, and, and, and they brought both of them back too. Yeah. So well, it's it, interesting it, to see the way that goes. Last year he was humming, and then he hurts the shoulder, and he's yep. out for weeks upon weeks, and it just set him back, and it feels like this year he's had stretches where he's looked great, and then he goes on the IL, and it's just like – Ah, uh, it's just been so frustrating. It's a very incomplete saga with the Giants. Yeah, no, no doubt. 